Welcome back, I'm Danny the Dinosaur Drawer and today I'm going to be showing you all how to draw the level 40 Giganotosaurus from Jurassic World the game. So yeah, this will be a fun drawing, we're going to have a side view, a full body drawing of the level 40 Giganotosaurus. So we're going to put an outline right now. So I have drawn Giganotosaurus before, but not the one from the game, I've drawn the, the more realistic um, version of Giganotosaurus. But today, since a lot of you have requested it, we are going to be doing Jignor's Source from the game. And I bet we're going to get a lot more views for this video than the other Jignor's Source, which will be great. So it's not completely side on because it's looking a little bit, it's like a three quarter view. And one of the reasons this Jignor's Source is not the most accurate is because it has only two claws when the real thing had three. Put this leg in here. A foot coming out there. Another leg will be right about here. So this is just a messy outline that I'm going to be putting in so we don't make any major mistakes with our proportions. So, yeah, there's the basic idea of what our Jignosaurus will sort of look like. So I'm going to start by making this leg look more realistic. And since it's level 40, this Jignosaurus has lots of stripes and other cool markings and spikes, or stripes and spikes and crests and other cool features. It's got a very long thigh and now I'll put in some stripes right away. It's got very unique stripes. And the stripes are actually a light color. So I was thinking we're going to... We'll have to shade in the rest of it black and keep the stripes a light color. Before we keep going, we have to put in the rest of the leg. Before we put in the rest of the stripes. Therefore, let's put the calf here. I'll put in the foot. Let's put in the, these claws, like so. I always put in the claws first before I put in the toes. And then you can put in the toes right about here. And also, I will erase some of these lines, which we do not need right now. Also, erase bit there. So now we can continue putting in our stripes. And the stripes sort of stop a little bit near the foot or the ankle. So now I'll go ahead and put some scales on top of the toes of the Jigonosaurus. So Jigonosaurus currently, I guess, is the largest meat, or at least some scientists say it could have outweighed Spinosaurus, but there's still debate about that. The T-Rex is definitely no longer the largest dinosaur predator. But it still was probably the smartest. I watch a lot of dinosaur documentaries, so like, I'm just spouting information. 
about the answers. Because T-Rex did have a bigger brain cavity than that of Gignosaurus or Carcharodontosaurus. So there, we have a nice foot of our Gignosaurus. From the knee. And then also, we can put in some more scales. Because we want to make this drawing look very professional. To do that, you have to put in lots of scales. And right about here is where we can start making it. It's like almost got like a painted area in its skin. Right about here. So we will shade in everything but the stripes. Be sure not to smudge. I should have done the tail first, perhaps. So I just finished two portraits of some of my friends. Those were a lot of fun, but very challenging. Dinosaurs are much, not much easier, but since we see people every day, it's so much easier to critique people drawings than dinosaur drawings. Because a lot of people don't know that much about dinosaurs or how they look like. Or if you ask someone just randomly without them looking at a picture to draw a dinosaur, they usually draw an atrocious looking like monster type thing. So I'm sure most of you have heard of this, but Jurassic World 2 is coming out next year. I'm definitely going to buy tickets for that. I would like to see it at least the first week it comes out. I think I'm pretty sure it's coming out in July. And Jeff Goldblum is in it, who played Ian Malcolm in Jurassic Park. So that'll be fun. And then Chris Pratt is going to be in it, so I'm really happy about that. It's, he was like my he's my favorite Jurassic Park, Jurassic World character. Um and then Claire's, or um, Bryce Dallas Howard's going to be acting out Claire again, which will be cool. So I'm just going to put stripes here along the tail. I'm not sure exactly what the plot is going to be that much in this movie. A lot of people have talked about militaristic dinosaurs. Which would be cool. And I know Dr. Wu is in it because I'm sure most of you who saw Jurassic World noticed when he gets in the helicopter and evacuates the island. So it sort of leaves you hanging a little bit. It's not like Pirates of the Caribbean 2, where you're like, wait a minute, I have, like, when I first saw Pirates of the Caribbean 2 on Amazon, I was like, immediately I had to see the third one, like, I, I bought the third one right away, and then we watched that too, so. They're completely connected, because the second one leaves you completely hanging. I don't want to spoil, but, um, for those of you who have seen Pirates of the Caribbean 2, you will know what I'm talking about, like, the last five seconds is like, Wait a minute.
but I can't believe like I watched it like after it came out like on Amazon so I didn't have to wait a year or two for it for the sequel to come out That's like one of the advantages, like with Lord of the Rings, we didn't have to, at least my generation didn't have to wait for it to come out. It's like all the movies were already out, so you can just watch them all in a row. Even though waiting for a movie to come out is kind of cool. It's like everyone's trying to guess what how great the movie is going to be or, yeah, stuff like that, so. Pirates of the Caribbean 5 just came out. I'm a pretty big Pirates of the Caribbean fan. Obviously not as big as Jurassic World, but still, I love Pirates of the Caribbean. So now I'm putting in the shoulder blade of Genosaurus. And I'll put it in its arms. With its two claws, which is kind of weird. Most people would immediately think this is a T-Rex just because of the fact that it has two claws. So its arms are relatively long. And we can put some scales on the arm. I'll put in the rest of the torso here. I'll put in the other opposite arm right here. So now, I'll take a little pause and I'll put this clear sheet so I don't smear it. And I'm gonna put in the spikes starting at the tail. These spikes like go straight up and they look like, yeah, they look pretty much like spikes. <laughs> Oh, I'm not sure whether to call them spikes or spines. So these will continue up the neck. Like so. I'll le pretty much leave them like that. Most of the torso here is going to be the painted color. At least the top part is. And this sort of has its like own stripes. So now the stripes are dark. And the rest of the body is um, a light color. I'll put that in like so. Even though it's color dark, we can still put in a few scales to give it a scaly appearance. Of course, even though this is light colored skin, we're going to make it dark because it's shaded the underbelly. some scales.
If you're wondering why my pinky is blue, it's just because I was doing some marker drawings and I got marker on it. So <laughs> forgot to wash my hands before I did the video, but <laughs> I almost never color with marker, so I'm not very practiced with it. So now I'm going to put this lizard-like skin that hangs from the neck. So I really hope you guys enjoyed my saber tooth cat video that I made a few weeks ago, or wasn't that long ago. So that was really fun, and if you want any more Ice Age creatures, please comment below on this video, and I will get to them in the future. So right now I'm just going to put in scales along the neck. Just to make it look cool. Now I'm going to put in the eye area. So the eye will be right about here. It's got a cavity in the skull there. Another one here. three little stripes that go through it, which is pretty cool. And then it's got a crest that goes like this. Which is obviously the most non-accurate part about this genomotosaurus. But still, it's level 40 and it's been evolved several times in the incubator. Put in some white stripes here. In real life, it's not black and white, so you can color yours in. I'm sure there's plenty of reference images out there. I'm using one of many for this drawing. So it's got its jaw partially opened, so a few teeth showing. Like so, mouthful of teeth. I'll put a bit of shading under here. A few scales. and nose and then we're basically done oh wait I forgot to put in the other leg sorry <laughs> this won't be easy because it'll be all dark so we won't have to worry about I just need the outline of it Yeah, so for this leg, we're just going to make it mostly shaded in. So I also wanted to thank you all who are on my dinosaur community, my dinosaur art community on Google Plus. You guys, your art has been amazing, and I really appreciate you guys posting all that stuff. If you guys have not, if you're watching this video and are not part of my community, I encourage you to go check it out. It's called 
dinosaur art and it's the top community that shows up um, if you search that in Google Plus. So yeah, and then I also post um, my vi my videos on there and then any other dinosaur artwork that I've been working on that, that I haven't put on YouTube. So that's fun community to discuss dinosaur art and then I can see how you guys have done on my videos which is really cool like I did the Saber Tooth Cat video and then one of you did a Saber Tooth Cat drawing that was really cool and it was so awesome to see that someone actually drew what I did in the video so I'm signing it as Danny the Dinosaur Drawer Put in the year. And there you have it. Here's level 40 Trigonosaurus from Jurassic World the game. So if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like below, a comment on any dinosaur projects you think I should take on next, and subscribe for more content. Yeah, again, thanks for watching.